Hi everyone, it's Michael. So I have an astounding problem for you all today. This one was from the USA Team Selection Test in 2006. So this is the test to select the students for the International Math Olympiad. And it was the last problem on the exam, so supposedly the hardest. Although I feel like the problems today are probably harder. Um, but if you'd like to try to solve it, feel free to pause the video. All right, so I'm going to go over the solution. So we have a triangle ABC, and we construct two isosceles triangles uh, outside of ABC. Um, so AP is equal to AB, uh, AQ is equal to AC. And not only that, the vertex angle of those two isosceles triangles are equal. So angle BAP is equal to angle CAQ. Uh, segments BQ and CP meet at point R. And we let O be the circumcenter of triangle BCR. And we want to prove that AO is perpendicular to PQ. All right. Uh, so first, I'm going to start out by noting a couple things that I saw fairly quickly um, before I got to the real meat of the problem. Okay, so we have two isosceles triangles APB and CAQ um, from the information given. And since they have the same vertex angle, they have to be similar isosceles triangles. Because um, if the vertex angle is similar, then all three angles in, the, in those two triangles have to be similar. Okay, so triangles PAB and CAQ are similar isosceles triangles. And if you know about spiral similarities, um, you would see that there's a spiral similarity taking triangle PAB to triangle CAQ. And from the properties of spiral similarities, um, that means that APBR has to be cyclic. Uh, so in, in the future on my channel, I'd probably just say using properties of spiral similarities, APBR is cyclic. But I'm going to prove it out here since it's kind of the first time that I've shown this idea. Okay. Um, so if if those two triangles are similar, um, well, that, that actually means in this case that triangle PAC and triangle BAQ are congruent. Uh, so I'm going to write this out. It's not hard to show. So angle PAC, uh, it's angle PAB plus angle BAC which is angle CAQ plus angle BAC, which is equal to angle BAQ. So if you look at triangles PAC and BAQ, uh, they have one angle equal, and the two sides surrounding it are also equal, because from the in given information, AP is equal to AB, and AQ is equal to AC. So that means they have to be uh, congruent triangles uh, PAC and BAQ. And since they both share point A, that means uh, there has to be a rotation about A that takes triangle PAC to BAQ. Okay. Um, so what this means is that um, if we take the three sides in triangle PAC, they have to make the same angles with the sides of triangle BAQ. Uh, so in particular, if you look at the sides PC and BQ of these two triangles, uh, the angle between them, so that's angle PRB, it has to equal the angle between uh, any other two pairs of sides. So it has to equal the angle between PA and uh, AB. Uh, so I'm going to write this out. So we have angle PRB, uh, that's the angle between uh, the sides PC and BQ of these two triangles but a rotation takes one to the other. So that has to be the same as the angle between AP and AB, because those are also corresponding sides of those two triangles, and that's just angle PAB. So we have angle PRB is equal to angle PAB, and so that means PARB is cyclic. Okay, so like I mentioned, uh, when I was solving this problem, I kind of just recognized this from properties of spiral similarities. Um, but if you haven't seen that before, uh, that's the proof of it. So PARB is cyclic, and then we can use exactly the same logic to show that QARC is cyclic. All right. So we have a lot of circles here. Sorry, I jumped ahead a little bit. All right. Um, so ultimately, we want to show that AO is perpendicular to PQ. 
And I'm going to use a very convenient um, theorem on when you can show that two things are perpendicular. So if we can show PO squared minus QO squared is PA squared minus QA squared, that would prove this. So I've mentioned that theorem pretty briefly in video number 30 on my channel. And one of the last problems I covered on my channel, um, so not the very last one, but the one before, uh, there was another poster on the forum that used this theorem. So it comes in handy a lot. Um, as long as you can show that PO squared minus QO squared is PA squared minus QA squared, uh, that proves the claim. Okay, so now I'm going to write out a little calculation here. Um, so PO squared minus QO squared, uh, we can rewrite that as PO squared minus R squared minus QO squared minus R squared, where R is the radius of this circle through BR and C. And PO squared minus R squared, that's the power of P with respect to the circle through BR and C. And this expression is the power of Q with respect to that same circle. Okay, so this is something um, I've kind of seen before that PO squared minus Q squared is actually the difference of the powers of P and Q uh, with respect to that circle, but that's the proof of it. Okay, all right. So the power of P with respect to the circle through BR and C well, that's also PR times PC. All right, so I'm going to write that out. So this power, it's equal to PR times PC. And this other power is equal to QR times QB. All right, so we're making some progress here. Okay. Um, so note that uh, PR times PC not only is it the power of P with respect to the circle through BR and C, uh, it's also the power of P with respect to this other circle uh, through QA, R, and C. Um, so my idea here was, uh, since we know P is, since we know this is also the power of P with respect to this other circle, uh, we can extend PA. Uh, to meet the other circle at a point D. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And then PR times PC, uh, that's also equal to PA times PD, because those are both the power of P with respect to that circle. And we can do the same thing with QR times QB. Uh, so that's equal to QA times QE. All right. Okay, so this is equal to PA times PD minus QA times QE. And like I mentioned before, ultimately we want to show that this, so this is equal to PO squared minus QO squared. Ultimately we want to show it's equal to PA squared minus QA squared. So we want to show this expression is really PA squared minus QA squared. Um, so to try to get there, I'm going to take this segment PD and I'm going to break it up into PA plus AD. And then I'm going to do the same with segment QE. Okay. Um, before I do that, though, I am going to first note something. So, um, so before I do that, I'm going to note that PEDQ is actually a cyclic quadrilateral. Um, so this is going to come in handy when I do that when I expand this calculation later, um, and you'll see why it ends up solving the problem. Okay, so um, if we want to show that PEDQ is cyclic, because um, ultimately that would let us use power of a point, um, so that PA times AD is EA times AQ, and that helps us in this calculation. Okay, so we want to show that PEDQ is cyclic. One way to do that is to show that angle PEQ is equal to angle PDQ. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to do a little bit of an angle chase. Um, so angle PEQ, that's the same as angle PEA. And that's 180 minus angle PBA. Um, but we know that these two triangles are similar. Triangle PAB, PAC, I'm sorry, PAB and CAQ 
And so uh, angle PBA is the same as angle QCA. So this is 180 minus angle QCA, and that's angle QDA because uh, of the cyclic quadrilateral. So if angle PEA is equal to angle QDA, uh, that's the same as um, saying that angle PEQ is equal to angle PDQ. So PEDQ is cyclic. So I'm going to draw that circle. All right. So we're just about um, to solve the problem. So I'm going to continue with the calculation that I mentioned before. So PA times PD, we can, we can break up PD into PA plus AD. Okay. So, so I just rewrote this. Uh, we can break up PD into PA plus AD, and we can break up QE into QA plus AE. And then if you expand it out, that's PA squared minus QA squared plus PA times AD minus QA times AE. Okay. But by power of a point, we know that this expression is zero in, in the parentheses because PA times AD is equal to QA times AE. Uh, since PEDQ is cyclic. Uh, so that goes away and we're just left with PA squared minus QA squared. So we have that PO squared minus QO squared is equal to PA squared minus QA squared. And so from that lemma that I mentioned, that solves the problem. That means that AO is perpendicular to PQ. Um, so this theorem, it's not too hard to prove. I mentioned it at the end of my video 30, so I'd recommend checking that out if you don't know this. But all you really have to do is drop perpendiculars from A and O to the segment PQ, and then use, Py use the Pythagorean theorem a couple times, and it easily shows uh, that AO is perpendicular to PQ. Uh, so this problem was a little bit tricky. Um, I don't know if it would be number six, because it was the last problem on the exam, I'm not sure if it would be that today, um, but in 2006, it was considered the hardest problem on the USA team selection test. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Uh, thanks, everyone.